build your opponent a golden bridge to retreat across. He who is prudent and lies in wait for an enemy who is not will be victorious. Even the finest sword plunged into salt water will eventually rust. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. Who wishes to fight must first count the cost. Begin by seizing something which your opponent holds dear, then he will be amenable to your will. Hence that general is skillful in attack whose opponent does not know what to defend, and he is skillful in defense whose opponent does not know what to attack. Convince your enemy that he will gain very little by attacking you. This will diminish his enthusiasm. If quick, I survive. If not quick, I am lost. This is death. If the mind is willing, the flesh could go on and on without many things. If there is a disturbance in the camp, the general's authority is weak. In battle, there are not more than two methods of attack, the direct and the indirect, yet these two in combination give rise to an endless series of maneuvers. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. In war, the way is to avoid what is strong and to strike at what is weak. It is easy to love your friend, but sometimes the hardest lesson to learn is to love your enemy. Never venture, never win. One may know how to conquer without being able to do it. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. Plan for what it is difficult while it is easy. Do what is great while it is small. Quickness is the essence of the war. Rewards for good service should not be deferred a single day. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence it is a subject of inquiry that cannot to safety or be neglected. The greatest general is not the one who can take the most cities or spill the most blood. The greatest general is the one who can take heaven and earth without waging war. The greatest victory is that which requires no battle. You have to believe in yourself. Attack is the secret of defense. 
defense is the planning of an attack. Do not swallow bait offered by the enemy. Do not interfere with an army that is returning home. If you fight with all your might, there is a chance of life, whereas death is certain if you cling to your corner. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. All warfare is based on deception. Be extremely subtle even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate. Be subtle, be subtle, and use your spies for every kind of business. Be where your enemy is not. Sun Tzu. The opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. The quality of decision is like the well-timed swoop of a falcon which enables it to strike and destroy its victim. The whole secret lies in confusing the enemy so that he cannot fathom our real intent. The wise warrior avoids the battle. To fight and conquer in all our battles is not supreme excellence. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. To secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. To win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. Treat your men as you would your own beloved sons. And they will follow you into the deepest valley. Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. Water shapes its course according to the nature of the ground over which it flows. The soldier works out his victory in relation to the foe whom he is facing. Wheels of justice grind slow but grind fine. When one treats people with benevolence, justice, and righteousness, and reposes confidence in him, the army will be united in mind and all will be happy to serve their leaders. When strong, avoid them. If of high morale, depress them. Seem humble to fill them with conceit. If at ease, exhaust them. 
If united, separate them. Attack their weaknesses. Emerge to their surprise. When the outlook is bright, bring it before their eyes, but tell them nothing when the situation is gloomy. When your army has crossed the border, you should burn your boats and bridges, in order to make it clear to everybody that you have no hankering after home. Who does not know the evils of war cannot appreciate its benefits. A leader leads by example, not by force. All men can see these tactics whereby I conquer, but what none can see is the strategy out of which victory is evolved. Appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. So in war, the way is to avoid what is strong, and strike at what is weak. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. The art of war is like water. It can take any shape and form. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. The clever combatant imposes his will on the enemy, but does not allow the enemy's will to be imposed on him. 